This is going to be a crash course about 10 minutes long on Google Classroom for those of you who have not used it before. I'm going to show the basics, um, kind of a set of survival skills to get you up and running. If you have more detailed questions about using features of Google Classroom once you get rolling, there are some really great YouTube resources out there, or please feel free to email me, brandy with a Y dot new, and I will send you videos or help you in any way that I can. I get to classroom by going to classroom.google.com or from your little waffle over here next to your sign in, click, excuse me, classroom. Okay. Once you have gotten to classroom, in the upper right hand corner, there's a plus sign. You hit the plus sign to create a brand new class. If the option to create a class is not there, please email myself or Michael Arnold and we will get that taken care of for you immediately. I'm going to go ahead and create a class. The only thing that is required on this is the very first line for a name. Create. All right, here's my test class, okay? I'm gonna show you some basics on the test class. Just like I said, what you need to know to make basic assignments and get information out to your students. The front page is the stream. It is used to communicate with your class, to give them announcements, or to maybe answer questions. This kind of works like a social media feed, like a Facebook feed. And students can also post questions here as well. Okay, so they may post things here and then you would have an option to reply to them. Classwork tab is the most important. We're going to talk about that in depth in a second because that is where you're going to assign classwork to your students. The people tab, if you have collaborative teachers that you want to add, you would add that here at the top with teachers and hit the little plus sign with the person. Students can enter a, general, a Google Classroom in one of two ways. One way is you can invite the students. So if you hit the plus sign here and then start to type their name, you can actually invite a student to your class. You can invite your entire roster by just clicking and finding each name and then hitting invite, okay? They will get an email that notifies them of that. But more importantly, um, we will be encouraging students to check email while we're out. However, we have found that this is not a real reliable means of communication with students. If you just invite them to the class, the next time they go to the classroom homepage, which hopefully them and their parents are both gonna be looking there now as we work through these days, it will be sitting there waiting for them. So it already kind of forces them into it. The other option, if you have a means of communicating with your students already, like a remind or something set up that's reliable for you, you can send them a classroom code. That code is located right here when you first come in, put in students. Or at any point in time, you can go to the gear wheel, click that, scroll down just a bit, and that exact same class code is right here. When you click on the arrow, you can copy it. That way you can just stick that class code into whatever reliable means of communication you have. So that's how we get students and then other teachers into our class. Your grade book is pretty much going to make sense to you once you get rolling with this. It looks like a traditional grade book. For class work, let's go in a little depth there because that is where you're going to be using mostly for your assignments. It is important for the NTI days that classwork be graded. Any and all classwork you can assign into classroom now, then you can be grading while you are working your regular schedule during our days off. All packets will have to be graded when they come back in after spring break, which is when we think we're coming back at this point. So anything you can assign in classroom now and get students to complete is going to save you time whenever we come back. I'm gonna show you the basics of just creating assignment. You're gonna hit create. You have several options here. Assignment is the first one. That's probably gonna be the easiest if you're a newcomer. You can also hit quiz assignment and it will take you out to do a self-grading Google form. Those are great for multiple choice tests. You can post a question 
and then students can read the question, respond to it, and respond to each other. It's a good way to uh, host a classroom discussion. Now, while we're out of school, you can just put materials here, like videos or PDFs or links that you want your students to have. Maybe if you have them working in a certain program, like a reflex, you could assign material here. That way there's that chance for them to see it and know that it's important and then it's a class assignment. If you teach the same thing several times throughout the day, you might have a test one first period or a test one second period, whatever your, you know, your classroom is, you can just reuse posts from other classrooms so you don't have to remake that entire assignment over and over. Let's go in and do assignment and I'll walk you through one. Because we are communicating with our students digitally at this point in time, I would be as specific as possible with the instructions here. Telling them exactly step by step what it is that your expectations are and what they need to do. The more clear you are here, the more time you're going to save yourself on answering emails or phone calls because students don't understand. From this point, you can add anything from your drive, let's say that it was a doc and you wanted them to write an essay so you could give them just a blank Google Doc to do their work on. You can link to anything that is saved on your computer. That also means that you can link to Word, uh, Microsoft Word documents or PowerPoints or any other resource that you have on your computer that you want to put here. It is not only Google products that will post to Classroom. Same thing goes for file and you can automatically just upload YouTube videos to here. So maybe put a video and then some questions on the other side um, on the back end so that kids have to answer those. I would just go there, find my video, attach it through the YouTube link, then go back in and attach something for them to um, answer on. You can add multiple things to one assignment here. You can also create. I find it helpful sometimes to create a template for students. So let's say I was going to ask them. To do an essay, I might just put my essay prompt here. And then it's automatically attached to the assignment and students as they are working on it, you will also have access to it and can see it and give feedback. Right here, you will notice this is super, super important when you're assigning something. It says the students can view the file. We know from our sharing settings that that would mean that they can see it, but they can't type on it. Depending on what, um, whatever it is you want to do, you may need to change these settings. If I was just wanting my students to read an article that was on a doc, I would put students view file. However, if I wanted students to be able to make comments or to actually type on something, I could do edit file. Or this last one is the one that I use most often, and it says make a copy for each student. By doing this, it's like I have taken it to the virtual copy machine. And when a student comes to their assignment, every single student would get a separate Google Doc with that essay prompt on it, and they would do their work on their own. It would automatically add their name to the top of it the second that they touched on it or that they opened it the first time. And then I would have their already their work there and I would know what's going on. I'm going to choose that option for this. Here's your on the right hand side. OK, this is kind of your dashboard. Here's the class. You can change to different classes. I'm not going to do that in this case because I'm working in test class. Um, for all students right now, this says it's going to all students. So I don't have any students in this class. You can differentiate here by giving different assignments to groups of students, you would uncheck all and then there would just be this whole list of everyone in my class and I could check which students are appropriate. Points, whether you want to leave it at 100 or make it 10 or 5 or whatever it is, one for being turned in for credit. But that grading part is what's going to be super, super helpful, helpful now because it is going to help you grade things and that is how students are going to be um, held accountable and get attendance right now. Due date, since we're looking at maybe making this um, the first week out, I would put all my due dates for materials for this week on the last day out, so like Friday the 20th. Topic, 
You can add one of those if you want to help separate things. And then a rubric, those are a little more advanced features. As we get rolling, if you're like, oh, I think I'm ready for that, then just contact me and I can help you get through that process. Now I'm ready to assign. I can just put a sign and this will immediately post to my classroom or I can save it as a draft or schedule it for a later date. This might come in handy if you're wanting to schedule a Tuesday assignment, a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday. That's just the basics of creating an assignment. If you have any more questions, please let me know. The only other thing you're going to be doing at this point is to be grading it. You'll see my assignments here. It also popped into the stream so the kiddos know it's there. They can get to it from either place. And oh, nobody's turned it in yet, but it will be here on my grade book on the back end, which is pretty easy to see. I'm going to take you into a grade book really quickly so that you can see that. These are all assignments that I have given at some point in time. This is an adult class. <laughs> Please don't judge any of these. Um, and I could, when I grade work, it automatically puts the grade into this grade book for me. Like I said, once again, that's going to be super important as we're working on this going forward because um, a grades on things is what is going to get us credit for attendance and get credit for attendance as well. If you start messing with it and you want some information on grading, let me know and I can send you a specific video on grading work in Google Classroom.